Okay, guys, um, this is Bob Truth. I'm going to do a quick video. One of the things I want to do is I want to address this guy. Um, he calls himself uh, Grace Evangelism. Uh, my concern with my first initial thing with uh, Grace Evangelism, as he called himself, and I think his name is Bill, is that one, he believes in quote unquote the sinner's prayer. And so when he says the sinner's prayer, what I did was I did a video addressing the sinner's prayer and why that's a work. And I'm going to show you those scriptures. And actually, I put it on his, um, I think, a more recent video he did. 44 minutes ago, I did that. So um, I'm going to, I'm screen recording that because oftentimes what people do is they just erase, they erase my comments, even if I'm not calling them names, even if I'm just addressing, actually asking them questions and giving them scriptures, they just erase the comments for some reason. I don't understand that. Now, the same people who will erase my comments, even though I give scripture, because I believe, look, knowing therefore the chair of the Lord, we persuade men. Uh, I'll, I'll address, I'll give him scripture because that's what it's about. It's not about me as a person. Uh, it's not even about him as a person. It is about the, the fact that I want to persuade people of the truth so that they can be saved uh, because you can claim you have a right gospel, but have a wrong God. That's a problem. You can also claim you believe the gospel and that's by grace. But then if you sneak in works, whether you do it willfully or ignorantly, God is saying, no, if you're doing works to he that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So you can't do any works, no works. And so you can't do what a lot of people do is just reclassify what works are and then say, oh, that's not a work. That's not a work, which is the video that I did where I said, Bill, you call yourself grace and you say you're greasy grace. But the problem is you slipped in the works. The grease has gotten you slip you you slipped away from grace and you slipped in works. So I want to do this video to sort of come back to that because you know I think he said that he was going to respond to my video and he said he was doing one of twenty or something like that and I'm like okay I'm waiting for the one of I'm waiting for the the I guess the two of twenty I don't know what I don't know where he's at right now but when you do your videos one they need to actually address the scripture line upon line precept upon precept. And it can't be a bunch of commentary, man. Like you, you're giving a bunch of commentary, line up on line, precept up on precept, okay? So I'm getting back to you because um, I'm waiting for you to address the sinner's prayer. So the first half of this video, I'm going to address this sinner's prayer thing. And I want you to please answer and address that for your audience because you say you're grace, but it seems like you put works in there. And there's no, it doesn't seem like you have, you put works in it. You put the sinner's prayer as a work. Praying, praying is a work. So I want to show that because I, I had another person who came to my um, to my um, YouTube channel yesterday, and I think they're I think they're they call themselves Pure Something Ministries, and uh, I noticed they came, but I, I they're associated with um, they are associated with that guy um, Grace what, Greasy Grace whatever they call him so Grace Evangelism, but he's not really I'm gonna stop calling him Grace Evangelism at this point because he slipped in words. So I'm going to say false grace at this point. So it's, it's a false grace that he's talking about. Because if you slip in any works, you're not really grace. And so I noticed they were associated with him. And they also had a video on their channel where they're talking about the sinner's prayer. And they were saying the same thing he was saying. That it's not of works. That, that they're saying that prayer is not work. Now I know salvation is not of works. That's true. Salvation is a free gift that you get simply after you've heard and believed the gospel. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's a free gift. You know, you pass from death to life. Right? And so that's true. All you got to do is believe the gospel. What, should, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're saved instantly. Just like that. It's freely given. You can't lose it. You didn't get it by works. You can't lose it by works. It's a free gift of God. Bless any man should boast. All right? We've established that. The gospel. The gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You believe that? You pass from death to life. And shall not come into condemnation. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Uh, so that's that. The other thing is the Bible says God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. That is in John 4:24. And just to show you that verse, it's in John 4:23, right here on my left. See this right here? This part. But the hour cometh, the hour cometh, because the gospel comes to every man, right? says the gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with what? Faith in them that heard it. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, the true worshipers, who are the true worshipers? The true worshipers shall worship the Father in what? Spirit and in truth. 
okay? This verse isn't something where someone can just say, oh, well, you know, context, 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 my friend. You don't understand the context in that. Now, God's just, he's saying that right here in John 4, 23, but he didn't mean that, quote, unquote, uh, back in the, uh, you know, in since Genesis. You know, it's like some of these arguments, I'm like, okay, can you give me a verse that says that? Not just you telling me that it doesn't mean that or that doesn't apply all the way through from Genesis. Doesn't the Bible say from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith? The substance of things hold for the evidence of things not seen. So in John 4, 23, it says, but the hour cometh and now is, now is, now is. It's saying it's when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. If you disagree with that, that's you disagreeing with it. Doesn't change, you, it doesn't change the Bible. Okay? Then it says, right here in John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, you got to ask yourself, well, wait a minute, if I got to worship him in spirit and in truth, and it says nothing about the flesh, in fact, it says the children of the flesh cannot please God, and it says the carnal mind is at enmity with God, that should just make you just question some of the stuff these people are teaching you. Okay? So what I've shown you here, I've just shown you the Bible, and that's what it says. If you don't agree with it, you don't agree with it. It doesn't change what it says. Okay? Now I want to get back to um, this guy because I want to get back to the fact that he was adding works and pretending that work is not a work. So reclassifying something that's a work to not being a work is uh, what false a lot of false people do. A lot of false teachers do that. They say, oh, that's not a work. You know, they're like... Study, that's like saying studying is not a work. But if it says study to show thyself <laughs> study to show thyself approved, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved, a workman. Work, work, work. So you can't pretend the word work doesn't mean work. That's like me saying, hey guys, you're not saved because you uh supposedly you didn't you're not studying enough. That's, no, that's not no, that's a work. Studying is a work. That's a work. Okay? And prayer is a work. You ever went to prayer service? <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. A prayer is not a work. Are you going to prayer service tonight? But I'm not just going to use that as an example of the hypocrisy that's going out in the world, but I'm going to actually give you scriptures because I want to do that. So I told this guy, you know, I think he has a bunch of troll accounts. And like I said, he's been downloading a lot of things. And uh, salvation is a free gift, not of works. It's instant after you believe the gospel. And I'm still waiting for him to do his uh, video response regarding the prayer works heresy. Um, the verses he's going to need to address, I'm going to get through. I don't want to take too much time, is John 9, 3, 1. Because I have a family. We want to get out today and enjoy the day too. So now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, him he heareth. If any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, him he heareth. But the hour cometh and now is that the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God heareth not sinners. He's talking about God. God. Any man be a worshiper of God, God. Worship the Father, God, in spirit and in truth. Okay? God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So why doesn't God hear these people? Because they're not in him. They're not in the spirit. They're not born again. And Nicodemus, you must be born again. 
What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. After you heard and believed the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In spirit and in truth, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life, the spirit of truth, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge. God is a spirit. I challenge you to find anywhere in the Bible where it talks about the flesh of knowledge, the flesh of truth, the flesh of wisdom, the flesh of life. You will not find it anywhere in the Bible. Anywhere. You will not find in the Bible where it says the children of the flesh are the children of the are the children of God. You won't find it. You won't find anywhere in the Bible where God is called the father of flesh. No, he's called the father of spirits. So look through and find these, quote, very clear, definitive statements that these people are supposedly building their foundation upon. Not, oh, here's the, the Bible says this. Here's what it means based on my paradigm. So the Bible says here, now we know that God heard not sinners, but any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hear it. Well, what's the will? Everyone that seeth the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life. This matches this over here, guys. There's no contradiction here. There's no contradiction. So you need to believe the gospel, right? Then be quickened by the Spirit before God hears your prayer. Where's my proof? Well, it's the Spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, the flesh profiteth nothing. That's what the Bible says. But in Psalm 80, 18, it says, So will not we go back from thee, quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. It's the Spirit that quickeneth, that giveth what? Life. God is worshipped by what? Those who have life. Those who are his children. God's children have eternal life. Okay? This is something you got to understand. God's children have eternal life. You must be born again, Nicodemus. This is not a hard concept. It is a very basic thing. You must be born again. Marvel not. You don't, the claim you, you're not a child of God until you're born again. I mean, this is so basic. I don't know what to say. Okay. Prayer is definitely a work. Proof. Colossians 4.12. Epipras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, right? You're born again, and once you're born again, it says it's God that worketh in you fulfill his good will and pleasure. Because now that I have the free gift of salvation, just like God came in one of his saints to me and gave me the gospel, I then can go out to all people and all nations and give them the word. Preach the word in season and out of season. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I'm not working for salvation. I'm not working to I'm not working for my salvation, nor am I working to keep my salvation. But I am God is working in me so that other people may be saved through the preaching of the gospel. Go out into all nations. Go into the highways and the byways. Bid them come. The spirit and the bride say what? Come. Let whosoever will take and drink of the water of life freely. Come. Okay? So, prayer is definitely a work. Colossians 4.12 says it, that Ephesus, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect, being found in him, having not my own righteousness, but a righteousness that cometh by faith, and complete in all of the will of God. What's the will of God? That all who see the Son and believe on him have everlasting life. Okay? 
more verses about the mouth working because I want Bill to address this. Proverbs 26, 28. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. A flattering mouth worketh ruin. It says a lying tongue. All men are liars. You don't have the spirit It's called the spirit of truth. But when the comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Wow. So wait a minute. It's one spirit of truth. It's not three spirits of truth. It's not two spirits of truth. It's one spirit of truth. The spirit, even the, from the Father, even the Father, even the spirit of truth. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, what do you mean even the spirit of truth? Is the comforter the spirit of truth? Or is the Father the spirit of truth? Well, it says the comforter is come, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the way, the truth, the life, so you're the spirit of truth? You're the comforter? How be it when he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Where does that spirit of truth come from? It comes from the Father. Look, let's go back. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. So God sends out his Spirit of truth. That Spirit of truth is come, and he will guide you in all truth. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, the life. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever he shall hear, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you show you things to come. Okay? So the spirit of truth is the spirit of God. Okay? The spirit of truth. It's one spirit. The spirit of truth. Let's go down. Look. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of what? Error. And by the way, it's just talking about the gospel. It's not talking about you got to understand everything that's quote unquote taught in the sense of studying and all this kind of stuff. It's just saying people don't hear the gospel. Jesus said to the Pharisees, he says, why can't you don't hear my voice? He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me because they've been what? Born again. They've been regenerated. They follow him in the regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's what it means. The Bible goes on to say, look, into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Let's see if I can find some more truth. Look, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. It's saying there's one spirit, the fruit of the spirit. It's not saying spirits. It's definitely not including the flesh. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Okay? So that takes us back, guys. If we were to go back, 
God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God sends out his spirit, and God's word does what? Testifies of what? God, who sent it, and whom he, the word went out from God. And people who receive the word, they're sealed and sanctified in the word. We have the witness in ourselves. We have God speaking in us. So when we have the word in us, we don't speak of ourselves. We speak because we're sealed by the Holy Ghost, but we speak of our Father. Right? We speak of our Father because we're sanctified in the word. Sanctified by thy word. Thy word is truth. Let's see if I can Let's see if I can do this to not autocorrect on me. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is what? Truth. Right? Sanctify them. So them is a plural. That's the body of Christ. We go out and we're telling people to believe on who? The Lord Jesus Christ. We're saying believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be what? Saved. We're not testifying of ourselves. We're testifying of who? God in us. It's God that work in you to fulfill his good will and pleasure. The word went out, right? Right? The word went out. So the word... Let's see if I can find it. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Okay? And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know that you know how that at, that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my word should hear the word of the gospel and what? Believe. In whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit. Not spirits, a promise. For the hope which is laid, upon, laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye have heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, spirit, Right? It's the spirit that quickeneth, that gives life to flesh, profit and nothing. And in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. For unto us was the gospel preached, the word of God, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit truth. You've got to be sealed and sanctified by his word. And once you're sealed and sanctified by his word, you're a new creature in Christ by the spirit, and you're sealed in the spirit of truth. You're not the truth, but you're speaking the truth. Speak the truth in love, right? In love, God is love. And then you're giving that gospel to other people who need to believe it and receive the word of truth so that they can be born again, sealed, a new creature created in Christ Jesus unto good works where they can go out and do the exact same thing, freely receive, freely get. Preach the word in season, not in season. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. It's saying the word of the Lord endureth forever. So when it says he that endured to the end, well, those who are sealed in the word, they never die. So yes, you do endure to the end. All right. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And that is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you because you never die. Right. So hopefully, like, you know, I'm covering this because I'm I'm trying to explain that um, and prove to you the following. God is the spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It says a lying tongue hateth those who are afflicted by it and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. God only hears his sons 
Proverbs 15, 8, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The prayer of the upright Before you're born again, before you're born again, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Before you're born again, you're wicked, you're not righteous. So the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. So if you go back to this guy, Epipras, before he was born again, before he was declared righteous by God, if he said, well, I'm laboring in prayer, and God would be like, you're wicked. So your sacrifice of laboring in prayer, your work, your labor of prayer is not received, right? So the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The prayer of the upright is his delight. Right? See, those of us who are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, we're testifying of our Father that are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name right and so we are heard because we are sealed in him and we have the holy ghost okay all right so the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the lord but the prayer of the upright is his delight wicked 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 is equated with evil evil Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see the good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Hence, you got to be born again. It says from faith to faith, you just shall live by faith. Anyone who's claiming that, oh, you know, somebody in any time period was saved by anything other than the gospel. One Lord, one faith, one baptism is a liar. And so it's talking about this and it says, and when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign and there shall no sign be given, but the sign of Jonas, the prophet. What is the sign of Jonas, the prophet? As Jonah was three days in the belly of the well, so shall the son of man be in the heart of earth. That's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, quickened by the spirit, God raised him from the dead. You got to believe that. That's the sign that's given. The sign is the gospel. That's the gospel. You got to see it by faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's how you have to see it. That's how you have to see it. You start with the verses you understand. The verse that says God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. You go through and you say, well, are there, can I find a verse where it says there are spirits of truth? No, you won't find that. It's just the spirit of truth. And then it says God is a spirit and there's one spirit of truth. So if God is spirit and there's one spirit of truth. Is God flesh? Is God multiple spirits? No. You simply start with the verse you understand. God is a spirit. And then you look and say, well, can I find where it says there are spirits of truth? Is there a plural spirit of truth? Is it, does the Bible say anything about the flesh of truth? Was the flesh of Mary and the flesh of David the truth, given that Mary and David had to be regenerated? There were children of the flesh before they believed. If they have to be a new creature created in Christ Jesus who says he's the way, the truth, the life, unless you think Jesus is lying when he says he's the way, the truth, the life, you have to say to yourself, well, wait a minute. If Jesus says I am the way, the truth, the life, and says you must be born again, Nicodemus, and Jesus telling Nicodemus this, he's like, you must be, he's like, marvel not, like, Nicodemus, why don't you understand this? This is something you should know. You must be born again. Nicodemus, are you concerned with your, quote, genealogy? Nicodemus, do you think it's because you're, quote, unquote, uh, of your, your lineage? Do you know Abraham 
Isaac and Jacob believed God and it was counted to them for righteousness? Do you know that they were born again? Do you know God is a God of the living and not the dead, Nicodemus? Do you know that we thus judge that if one, if, if one died for all, then we're all what? Dead? And Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were born again. They were new creatures created in Christ. And the life, the life is found in Christ Jesus, who is the way, the truth, the life. So either you believe it, and it says it's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, the flesh profits nothing. It's the same spirit of truth, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge. It's the fruits of the what? Spirit. God is a spirit. And here's another thing. Look, guys. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. See, there's the body of Christ, and then there's the head. There's many baptized, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Y'all been baptized by one spirit into one body. One way, one truth, one hope. And so it says all. It doesn't say, it doesn't say some spiritual blessings in Jesus. In it doesn't say in earthly places here. I mean, the thing is, Jesus told the Pharisees, says, You're of this world. I am not of this world. He says, You are from beneath, I am from above. It says, be not conformed to this world. It says, the light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. And it says, the light has no communion with darkness. It says, this world is evil and wicked. It says, you can't eat at the table of the Lord and the table of devils. It says, make the tree good or make the tree bad, make the tree evil. If it be of the law, it is no more grace. Make it free or make it of works. Make God spirit or make God flesh. Notice it says all spiritual blessings. Where is, where is the carnal blessings? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, there's the body. But there's also the head. The father is the head of the household, guys. And there's one head. And there's no grandchildren. And the body is the bride. And the bride carries the children. So the body is the bride and the children. And the head is the savior of the body. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Though we be many, we are one in Christ. And all spiritual blessings in heavenly places are in Christ. Now, how in the world can anyone try to teach you this lie about, quote, quote, Zionism, carnal Zionism, carnal Zionism? There's no such thing as carnal. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship in the spirit and truth. Children of the flesh are at enmity with God. God is no respecter of person. So how in the world are these guys teaching this stuff? They're teaching it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Well, <laughs> All spiritual blessings are in Jesus Christ. Remember that. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Remember that. And be found in him having not, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. Notice. Faith of Christ.
notice, found in him, all spiritual blessings in Christ, in heavenly places. It's telling you here that God heareth not sinners. If any man be a worshiper of God, him God heareth. So the prayer of the upright is his delight, being found in him. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the what? Again, I challenge you to find spirits of God. I know God has spirits because his children are spirits. I get that. I understand in Revelation it talks about the seven spirits of God because it's talking about the people who have entered his rest, the weak, quote unquote. For God, when you enter his rest, you're in his rest. You don't fall out. You know, once you enter his rest, enter my rest. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, meaning those who believe have entered my rest, meaning being found in Christ. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. You're no longer of this world because the world was made in six days, and on the seventh day, God, what? Rested from his works. And so you need to rest from yours and believe and be found in Christ, not working. Right? And so, wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God, not the spirits of God, call it Jesus a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. But yet, there's many who are going to come to me that in that day. This is the thing. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy, thy, thy wonderful works, which thou hast done. And thy thoughts, which are to us word, they cannot reckon up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works. Right? Not everybody is a, a work of God. See, there's a work of man in man's hands. There's a carnal. See, children, you decide you're going to go make a child. You can go decide you're going to make a child with any harlot, anybody you want to, you know, whatever. Anyone who will receive you. God's saying, no, that, that's, 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 uh, that's, that, those are children of the flesh. Those are children of the flesh. God's saying, look. I'm giving you a choice. Choose life. I've laid before you life and death. Choose life. Satan is crouching at the door. Choose life. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works. Which thou, notice this. I want you to, this is the part I want you to really pay attention to. Hast. 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 Done. And thy thoughts, which are to usward, thy thoughts are to usward, us word. Who do you think he's talking about there? They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. I looked up in heaven, I saw a great multitude. Great multitude. But there's many who aren't going to believe. Compared to all the people who will ever be born, very few will actually believe. And so what I'm saying here is it's God that worketh in us, those who are saved, to do his good will and pleasure. See, that's why we're called the body of Christ. And so it's saying many will say, now let's go back to the verse. Because the point I'm pointing out, it says, wherefore I give you to understand that what? No man speaking by the spirit of God call it Jesus a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. 
No man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That's saying, look, you had a choice whether to believe or not to believe. The law was so that every mouth can be stopped. Shut your mouth. Don't try to do a work. Just shut up and believe the gospel. And when you believe it, then you're born again. Quicken us and I will call upon thy name. And that's not even a carnal calling. And it's not even you that's speaking. It's the Spirit of God speaking in you. No man speaking by the Spirit of God calling Jesus Christ. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. I want you to address this. I want you to address the sinner's prayer. I want you to address that. I want you to show that you're not a hypocrite and acknowledge. You don't have to acknowledge it to me. You just need to believe the truth. But it's a big thing when a person can't admit they're wrong. It's it's a it's a proud it's a proud thing. You know, God hated the proud look. No man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Well, wait a minute now. In Matthew 7, it says, Many will say to me in that day. Well, you see the people who didn't enter his rest. See, they died outside of Christ. They weren't found in him having having his righteousness, they tried to have their own righteousness. And their righteousness is filthy rags. It's as dirt. Dust to dust. So many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? They're like, I'm going out. I was giving the gospel too. And in that name, casting out devils. Lord, I was, I was casting out those, those unfruitful works of darkness. And in thy name, done many wonderful works. Well, the problem is, Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works. It's God that worketh in you, fulfill his good will and pleasure. And God's not in you, in you until you're born again and sealed in the body of Christ. That's why there's a head and the head leaves the body and tells the body where to go and what to do. It's God that worketh in you, fulfills good will and pleasure. You got to be found in Christ, having not your own righteousness. And even then, you, get, you receive the free gift and you got the free gift. And now it's saying, go out and tell other people about the free gift. Go preach the gospel of the kingdom. Tell people the kingdom of God is at hand. Tell people that today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Say as many as receive him, gave him power to become the sons of God. Tell them they got to be born again and marvel not at that, Nicodemus. Marvel not at that. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. It says no man speaking by the spirit of God called Jesus the curse. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. But many are going to come to him that day saying, Lord, Lord. Have I not done many wonderful works? And he's going to say, what? Depart from me. I will profess unto them, I never knew you. God doesn't even know you until you believe. Until, see, the idea that somebody's going to say, well, these are God's people. When God says, I know them that belong to me. He says, my sheep hear my voice. He says, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. None shall snatch them from my hand. And we understand the sheep to be in the right hand and the goats to be on the left. And for someone to say that God's sheep are some people who don't believe and to try to make it children of the flesh when he's called the father of spirits. And when it says God's the spirit, knows that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And for someone to try to claim that God's some kind of respect to a person and then try to sneak in the works of a sinner's prayer, they're just a filthy liar. And I'm here to expose those unfruitful works of darkness. And then will I profess in them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker, ye that work iniquity. So when the Lord knows you, he knows you. Once you're a son, you're a son. Once you're born again, you're born again. You can't be unborn. Once you're sealed in Christ, you're in Christ. It's he that is able to keep you from falling. He said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. So if it's Christ that liveth in me and I'm sealed in him, I'm sealed in the light, then no darkness can get into God because God is light and in him is no darkness. So I'm sealed in the light. How will darkness get to me? It can't. I don't count my flesh. My flesh, in my flesh, and my flesh is as filthy rags. I don't, my rags, my filthy flesh will be tossed back to the dirt. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So God is saying that he only hears those who have believed on him and are sealed in him. And after that, the spirit speaks for them. Do you understand that? I want you to address this. I want you to address this. Okay? The thing that you seem to be confused about, it says the bride and the children are to be silent. Right? The bride and the children are to be silent. Let me 
the unlimited I typed it wrong. Look. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence. That's the bride. That's the body. Right? The spirit and the bride. The woman is to learn in all in silence. In silence. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Okay. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. I am a child. Okay. Now, the reason I'm giving you this is because it says the spirit and the bride say come. And the bride have the children, right? We're the children. We're one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one body and one spirit. We're not the head, we're the body, but we have the mind of Christ. So as the body, we have the mind of Christ. We're to speak the words of the what? Of the father, of the husband. Okay? And so the bride and the children are to be silent, and the father speaks through them. One spirit of witness speaking through the children of promise, speaking through the bride, speaking through those, those who are sealed in the body. Now the proof of this is John at 12, 49, for I have not spoken to myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should what? Speak. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the what? Holy Ghost. Listen, who's speaking? 2 Corinthians, since ye seek proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is weak, is not weak, but is mighty in you. Now it's talking about Christ speaking in me, but then it's talking about you speaking by the Holy Ghost. Then it says, Jesus is saying, it's the Father which sent me. He gave me command what I should say and what I should speak. And then you keep going up and it says, no man speaking by the spirit of God, the spirit of God. It doesn't say the spirits. It says the spirit of God. So when it says these three are one, I think it's saying these three are one spirit. These three are one spirit. And how you know this is true, we just go to 1 John 5, 6. That is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only. Nicodemus, you got to be born again. But by water and blood, because he died for our sins. He was quickened by the what? Spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, the flesh brought from nothing. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. The spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. These three are one what? It just told you it bared record in heaven. And it's talking about, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. It doesn't change from verse 1 John 5, 6 to 1 John 5, 7, where it says, it is the Spirit that beareth witness, the Spirit is truth. It's talking about Jesus, the man, the mediator between God and man here, talking about the water and the blood. That's the man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Then it's saying to you, it's saying there's the spirit of Christ. 
And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit of truth, the spirit of life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. Well, if Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, he's the way, the truth, the life through what? Through the spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth and giveth life to flesh, profit of nothing. And it's saying that is the spirit of truth, not the spirit, not the spirit in the flesh and the blood. It's the spirit of truth. And there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now, the Word proceeded from the Father. He speaks the word, preach the word in season, out of season. Go out and preach the word, the word that liveth and abideth and endureth forever. Sanctify, my, sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. So the word goes out for the Father. And those who receive the word are sealed by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, the Father, the word, they have one spirit. That one spirit of truth speaks in them. Hence, when you come over here, the Father gave me a commandment and what I should speak. No man speaking by the spirit of God. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is true. No man can say that Jesus is Lord by the Holy Ghost. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. Since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me towards you, it is weak. Christ speaking in me, it is the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. For it is not ye that speak. It is not ye, that's a plural that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. Ye is plural. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. It is the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. These are people who have that one spirit, that one true spirit of truth in them. The father, the word, the Holy Ghost, that's one spirit in them, the spirit of truth. And these three bear witness on earth because we have received the spirit we're dead to the flesh. We were born of water. We came from our mother's womb. We believe the gospel. We died to the flesh. And the children of the flesh aren't children of God. So we're led by the spirit. And if the spirit of Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Even the spirit of truth. The way, the truth, the life. These three agree in one. We agree that all men are sinners. And we deserve what? Death. And since we believe we're no longer children of the flesh, the water and the blood, we're children of the spirit. And if ye receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, that he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son hath what? The witness. Singular. The witness in himself. Wait a minute. What's that one witness that keeps talking about? It is the Spirit that beareth witness. The Spirit is truth. What's the witness? Because once you believe, you're dead to the flesh. And it's saying, look, God is manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. I have the witness in me, but I'm considered dead to the flesh. He that believeth not what God hath made who? Him. 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 A liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth. For it's not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit of truth. For the fruit of the spirit, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. All spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. It's the spirit that breath witness. The spirit is truth. God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. If ye receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater for the witness of God. For this is the witness of God, which he testified of his son. He that believeth on the son hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of him. He believed not the spirit of God. It's the spirit that breath witness. The spirit has the record. The spirit is truth. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The spirit and the bride say, come. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Your heart. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. The spirit of life. The spirit of truth. The spirit of righteousness. The spirit of wisdom. Then they said to Jeremiah, the Lord be a true, a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all things for the, for the which the Lord, thy God shall send thee to us. And here's the thing.
See, it's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life. And it says God is a spirit. And it says men go around accusing one another. That's what men do. So men will declare men guilty, but God says all men are already condemned. Right? And so God's coming and saying those who believe are just being declared righteous. So he that believeth not, the Son of God is condemned already because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Whosoever killeth any person, the murder shall be put to death by the mouth of, of, of witnesses. That's plural. That's plural. But listen here. But one witness, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth, shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. So when you get that spirit, you get the spirit of truth in you, that spirit, the spirit that beareth witness in you, you won't die. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this. But one spirit, one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. See, Satan comes before accusing, the great accuser. All men are already condemned because they believe not. John 69, of sin because they believe not on me. Now, let's deal with this in five minutes. Hopefully, we can deal with the let us create man in our image. The let us create man. In, I want you to address the whole sinner's prayer thing because now we've addressed that. Either way you look at it, um, the sinner's prayer is a work. So I don't know how you're really getting around that, but um, you need to address that. I mean, you're, you're sitting here, you're teaching, you're calling people names, you're calling people stupid and calling names. That's all nice. That's all fine and dandy. Setting up different accounts, thumbing down videos without asking questions or giving verses, not really testing the spirits, just concluding yourself right in your own eyes and not really testing or not really trying to show, oh, let me let me show this guy using the scriptures. Let me try to convince the quote unquote gainsayer. If you think I'm a gainsayer, then try to convince me. Try to compel me with the truth. That's not being done. That's uh, setting up troll accounts and thumbing down videos on a slide but not addressing or directly having a conversation. Not good, man. Why is it that the first time I hear about you is by someone letting me know that you have these troll accounts and you're the one who's thumbing down my videos and, and leaving comments that have no scriptures in them, just, just obscene comments? So that that's how you're that's what that's what we're supposed to do? I didn't know that's how we're supposed to do it. I'm sorry, I don't see that in my Bible either, just like I don't see your Trinity diagram. So let us create man in our image. Us. By the way, there's one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Though we are many, we are one in Christ, being found in him, having not mine own righteousness. There's Apparently there's more than one saved person throughout all time in the body of Christ, right? Glory be to Christ and the church throughout all ages. Apparently there's more than one person who's saved. Since, since eternal life is found in Christ, Right? I mean, let's, let's look this up. See if I can find this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So if life is found in Christ, how in the world can anyone say Israel is outside of Christ? The true Israel. I'm not talking about the fake one. I'm talking about the Israel of God, which it says Jerusalem above is free as mother of all. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. I'm pretty sure the husband of New Jerusalem, which would be Israel is my son, even my firstborn, is with the bride. Remember, because he says don't husbands shouldn't leave his bride. That's why it says the spirit and the bride say come, because they're always together. You don't leave your you don't leave your bride. You don't abandon your bride, apparently. And see, since God's God of living and not the dead, God brings forth lively children. See, Sin, when it fulfills itself, bringing forth what? Death. But see, those who are born again, they never die. They never perish. None will snatch them from my hand. God's got a living and not the dead. So if you're God's got a living and not the dead and life is found in Christ, anybody who says anything about God's chosen people in any positive way, God's chosen people, God's chosen land, God's chosen this, God's chosen city, if they say it's of this world and Jesus already told you my kingdom is not of this world and Jesus already said light had no communion with darkness, he said corruption can't inherit incorruption. Anyone who tells you that it's outside of Christ and it's not by the spirit, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ saying, I'm the way, the truth, the life for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Anyone who says it's outside of Christ, who says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He's the only wise savior. Anyone who says anything outside of that, I don't care how flattering they are. I don't care how zealous they seem. They're a liar. They're a liar. You can set up many troll accounts. It doesn't, that doesn't change the facts. Let us create men in our image. Us, one body. Listen. 
For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now, we've already studied what the will of God is. The will of God is that all who see the Son and believe on him have everlasting life. Those who don't believe, they're condemned already. So this is the gospel in which I declare unto you. See, the gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us. Let us. But it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. If our gospel be hid, it is hidden from those whom the God of this world is blind, the mind of them that believe not. Okay? Is God three spirits, two spirits, spirit and flesh? I want you to find that in the Bible. I know God came in the likeness of sinful flesh. I know that God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. I know that. But it says preached unto the Gentiles. Why? Because guess what? A Jew is not one outwardly, neither is that circumcision outwardly in the flesh, but a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision in the heart by the Spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. All of Israel shall be saved because Israel is saved in the Lord. Isaiah 45, 17. Can a nation be born at once? Who had heard such a thing? Yeah, because true Israel are all those who are sealed in Christ. See, see, this is the thing. See, people are trying to make God a respected person. So it says, at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. See, my kingdom's not of this world. Having no hope and without God, where? In the world. Light have no communion with darkness. The light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. God looked down and saw that all the earth and all the men, all the flesh of earth had corrupted itself before the Lord. He said, corruption can't inherit any corruption. He says, come out of her, my people. When he says, come out of her, my people, he's talking about coming out of this world. He's talking about people who forsake mother, father, sister, home, brother, and wife, and self, and lands for his name's sake. And the only way you do that is not by works. You simply believe the gospel, and you're born again. You're a new creature. You're not of this world. Jerusalem above is free. is mother of us all. All spiritual blessings. you got to be born again because the children of the flesh are children of God. Children of promise count for the seed, and you're no longer considered of this world. This world is filthy, defiled, corrupt, polluted. Touch not the unclean thing. Light hath no communion with darkness. You can't eat at the table of devils and of God. So it says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise. But then let's go into this, guys. Okay? Without God in the world, but now in Christ. So without God in the world, but now in Christ. Ye who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You got to go through the veil of the flesh. For he has made peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You know why? Because the children of the flesh aren't children of God. So he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He died according to the flesh. He was quickened by the spirit to put the devil to in what? Open shame. It doesn't change the fact that children of the flesh aren't children of God. He just put the devil to an open chain. He showed that he had the power over death. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law and commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man. So God tried, God destroyed the, what God destroyed God? No, children of the flesh aren't children of God. It says he's made of the seed of David according to the flesh, but declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemies thereby. And came and preached peace to you, which were far off and to them that were nigh, right? Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. There's people who aren't even born yet. They're far off. They're not even born yet. They're going to come forth later. I saw the dead raised. We just judged that one died for all, then we're all dead. Well, then Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. So they got to be raised first. And when they raise the first time, they don't have life. They don't have eternal life. They have carnal life. They have to hear and believe the gospel, and then they receive eternal life. Ephesians 1, 12 through 14. It says, and through him, we both have access by what? One spirit, God, the spirit, and those that worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body right? One spirit unto the Father, the Father of spirits, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. See, because now you are strangers to God when you were in the world without hope, right? Without God, without the spirit of hope, without the spirit of righteousness. You are not found in him. You are found in this world. You're found in darkness. You are found in captivity. You're found bound by the flesh. And it says, but now, Therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. See, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. With the saints and of the household of God. There's one household of God. And in that household of God, there's one father. There's not three fathers. There's not, there's not the three heads. There's not three heads of household. There's not three men with one bride. There's no trinage et toi, as you would have it. These spiritual children are children who receive the word of God, the spirit of truth, the word of truth. 
sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. It says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So in that household, it said there's, there's no grandchildren. There's only the father. There's the bride. There's the children. And it says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So in that house, it says Jesus is the head. The lamb, come, I will show you the lamb. The lamb, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And it says, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And then it goes and shows that holy city, Jerusalem, descending down from heaven. See, the kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God is within you. I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I'm telling them the kingdom's at hand. I'm saying today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I'm preaching the word in season, out of season. I'm knowing that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. I know that it's God that works in me fulfills his good will and pleasure. I know that one plant is one water, but God give it the increase. I know if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I know that once we're born again, we've been translated from this kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. I know that light doesn't look like darkness. I know that the light has no communion with darkness. I know that fruit don't look like thorns. I know that sheep don't look like goats. I know that corruption cannot inherit incorruption. I, neither, I know to make the tree good or make the tree bad, and God is good. I know that he come to give life and not death. We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all already dead. So that if he came to give life and God is a God of living and not the dead, anybody who says they have life outside of Christ, they're a liar. They're a filthy liar and the truth's not in them. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and other household of God. And ye are built up on the foundations of the what? Apostles and prophets. Seems like they believe too. Seems like there's one way. Seems like Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, life. And it seems like, seems like he is the way, the truth, the life. It says he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all built fitly framed together, growing into a holy temple in, look, in the Lord. Can you see the building of the temple? Can you see it? We look not for the things which are seen, but for the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. Can you see it, Billy? See, I'm not telling you guys to believe me. I'm not telling, I'm not putting my name out there. My name is insignificant. I come in my father's name. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saying he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that sent me, see the word proceeded out of the mouth of God. I, I've been sanctified by his word. His word is truth. I have the spirit of truth with me. I'm not the truth, but I'm speaking the truth because the truth is in me. It's my father that speaketh in me. It's God that worketh in me to fulfill his good will and pleasure. In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God. Lest a man be born again, he can't enter the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. Habitation of God through what? The spirit. The spirit and the bride say come. I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. The spirit and the bride say come. The lamb and his wife, the lamb and his bride, the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit, God is a spirit, and the bride say come. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now to thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Look. Who is there even among you that should shut the doors for naught? Who's the way? Who's the truth? Who's the light? Who's the door? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your what? Hand. God's not worship with men's hands. Neither do you dwell in the temple made with hands. 
Here's what a Gentile is. From the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great amongst the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered into my name. And a pure offering for my name shall be great amongst the heathen. A Gentile is a heathen. Now, if you're calling yourself a, a Gentile after you're saved, you're, you're, you're a fool. You're a foolish person. Because a Gentile is a person who worships dumb idols. You're led about with dumb idols. So anybody who's saved is not a Gentile. Anybody, people who are saved are called Jews. Because the Jews not one outward, neither is circumcision not outward in the flesh, but the Jews one inwardly, circumcision in the heart, in the spirit. In the spirit. God is a spirit, and those that worship him worship him in spirit and if true, the children of the flesh are in children of God. Figure it out. Figure it out. And so it's talking about how they won't accept offerings, but it says, Wherefore it's contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Israel shall be saved in the Lord. You shall not be ashamed or confounded. World without end. Isaiah 45, 17. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. The gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish, but to those of us who are saved, the power of God unto salvation. God will save his people. Even to them which stumble at the word, preach the word in season, not a season, being disobedient, whereunto they were appointed, right? They put before you life and death. There's no question. If you don't believe, you're dead. God's a God of the living and not the dead. Look, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. He just went and told you, that these are people who have life. You're a chosen generation. How are you going to be a chosen generation if you haven't been regenerated? How are you going to be chosen outside of Christ? Then said you got to be found in him having not your own righteousness. How are you going to be chosen if you're still of this world? And God says light has no communion with darkness. A royal priest said, how are you going to be a, a priest and you not even have the spirit of wisdom? How are you going to be in a part of the holy nation when you're still part of this unholy world? How are you going to be a peculiar people when you're not sealed in the precious cornerstone, Jesus Christ? That ye should show forth the praises of him, God's the spirit, those that worship him must worship him in the spirit, who have called you out of darkness. Give me a break into his marvelous light. How are you going to be a child of the light when you're not sealed in Jesus, who says he's the light of the world, and he's called the father of light, and says, ye are children of the light, let your light therefore shine before men, that they may glorify your father, which is in heaven. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He's not glorified by death. He's not, he's not, he's not praised by death. He's not, God heareth not sinners. He doesn't hear the dead. He says, look, you need to believe. This isn't Calvinism. He's saying you need to believe. You can believe. Because believing is not a work. To he that work or not, but believing, believeth on him. Which in time past, because he's saying when you're dead, you do dead works. So the only thing you can do is believe. He that worketh not but believeth. It doesn't say he that worketh not but prays. He that worketh not but labors in prayer. It doesn't say that, Bill. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which has not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Well, apparently, people... Don't start out in Christ. Meaning people start out as sinners and they need to be born again. And then they're found in Christ. Who is righteousness? Who is our life? For those who believe. It says, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust and war against the soul, having your conversation honest amongst the what? Gentiles, whereby they may speak to you as evildoers, that by your good works, what? Is God the work within you fulfills good will and pleasure that they may shall behold, glorify God in the day of what? Visitation. See, who is an antichrist, but he who denied that Jesus Christ is present tense come in the flesh. God comes every day. He comes in his saints. He comes in the body of Christ. Those who are led by the spirit. If meanings are led by the spirit of God, have the right to be called the sons of God. Power to become the sons of God. So it talks about. I want to finish this video.
get back to my, my family. for the phrases I know. Look, this is the thing you gotta understand. To whom coming is unto a living stone. God's the God of living and not the dead. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. It's the spirit that quickeneth, gives light, the flesh profit nothing. Children of the flesh are children of God. If the spirit of Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit of the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a what? A spiritual household. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a what? A lively stone means you have life. Jesus, I come to give life and life more abundantly. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Are built up a spiritual house. This matches what we just read about the common household of Israel. A spiritual temple, a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up what kind of sacrifices? Spiritual sacrifices. Spiritual sacrifices. These spiritual sacrifices are living. God's not accepting death. Maybe I can. That you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The body that's the living sacrifice is the one that does not die. That's why Jesus says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, in me, in me, in me, in me, being found in him, having not my own righteousness, but the righteousness coming by faith, life which is in Christ, shall never die, believeth thou this. Okay? So, going back to the let us, for as God that worketh in you, there's God that worketh in us, the God worketh in the body of Christ, but all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. God is a spirit. It says, but all these worketh that one and self-same. Self-same means exact same. Look it up. Look it up in the context. That one and self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Right? Now he that wroth us for the self-same thing is God. One self-same spirit, God is a spirit, those of which are much worse than the spirit and truth, who also hath given unto us the earnestness of the spirit. God is a spirit, they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. How can Zionist Carlos claim chosen people are in unbelief and ignore? Romans 8, 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you, now if, now if any, this is a conditional statement. Now if any man, see that any man is defining the parameters. The now if is the conditional statement and the any man is defining the parameters. The any man actually means, I'm going to go to the Greek on this one. No, forget it. I'll just say English. Any man means any man. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He is none of his. The children of the flesh are not children of God. He is none of his. He is none of his. You can't get around verses by claiming they don't exist. When it says you're not in the flesh but in the spirit, and then someone says, well, wait a minute, we got to find out that these according to a certain group, we're going to call them Jews according to the flesh, and to argue about stupid genealogy. When Ephesians 5, 29 through 30 says the church is of its body, of its flesh, and of its bones, how come you can't find that verse, Bill? How come you can't find Ephesians 5, 29 through 30 where it says, how come you can't find this verse? Let me just ask you this. I'm really curious. Why, why can't you find this? For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nursed and cherished it, even as the Lord of the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. See? We are members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. Okay? So it says that Jesus was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. But it says we are of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, too. So the church is a people of all types of different colors and stuff. But it says the children of the flesh aren't children of God. So what your point is about the flesh is moot. But then it says if you want to argue about the flesh, it says, well, we're of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And people of all different colors are of, of, of different flesh are a part of the church. 
you got to admit, anybody can be part of the church, right? You're just trying to say not anybody can be part of Israel, which is a lie. It's just God is just telling you, children, you got to be born again. God's saying, look, there's people who are wheat and tares who are fake. And the church and Israel are the same. They're synonymous. They're the same. He's basically saying the children of the flesh aren't children of God. He says you got to be born again. But it's saying pertaining to the flesh, he says, look, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. But then at the same time, it says we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. He's just God denying himself. Oh, maybe God's a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in the spirit. And truth. Maybe God came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Maybe he came in the likeness of sinful David, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, myself, and every other person who's a sinner. Maybe he put on flesh. How come you can't find this verse? How come you claim you believe the KJV? And then if I go to cross-references, look at the other Bibles, they just erase the flesh and bones. And how come you're lockstep in the, how come you're lockstep with these guys who erase and change the Bible? I'm trying to understand how is it that you're lockstep with these guys who change the Bible? I don't get it. And then how come the Bible says, not only that, It says, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Jesus Christ is putting off, what, what is he putting off? Is he putting off righteousness? Is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? What is he putting off? It said we built up a holy spiritual temple. He's definitely not, God's a spirit. He can't put off the spirit. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can't put off the spirit. The spirit have not flesh and bones, you see I have. But he can put off the flesh. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. But if you have the spirit of Christ, it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. God is the spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in the spirit of truth. The Bible is consistent. God's people are only those in Christ, the way, the truth, the life, eternal life. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore greatly, ye, there, ye therefore do greatly error. The Bible says you do great, therefore greatly error. You greatly error. Every Zionist greatly, 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 every Trinitarian greatly errors. Every tritheistic, polytheistic, false Trinitarian Zionist greatly errs. They've fallen for the lie of Catholicism, and they've fallen for the lie of the Pharisees, because the Pharisees said the same exact thing. They said, Pharisees said, and if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Jesus told them. And when, they, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The reason the kingdom of God cometh not with observation is simply because we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are, Bill, you have to, the things which are seen are temporal. At some point, you got to say, you know what? This guy, Bible for Truth, he's giving me, he's actually giving me Bible verses. I'm going to actually study this out. I'm going to actually ask him some questions. Well, I'm going to study it out and I'm going to actually address it. But if you won't do it, that's fine. I'm doing it for the other people who aren't so proud. Because I understand how it is. Like you become a teacher. And let me, let me give you something. I used to teach the Trinity. Okay? In ignorance. In ignorance. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. God's kingdom is not temporal. God's kingdom is eternal. God's an eternal God in an eternal kingdom, and his children have eternal life. So the things which are not seen are eternal. That's why it says... And let it be the hidden man. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. God is a God of the living, not the dead. He therefore do greatly err. Even the ornament of a meek and what? Quiet. 
It's not you that speak it, but the Father that speaketh in you. It's not you that speak it, but the Father that speaketh in you for those of us who are saved. See, the body doesn't speak. The Father speaks through us. But there's one head, one mouth, one word of God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one spirit of truth, one spirit of wisdom, one spirit of life, one spirit of righteousness. Which is in the sight of God of great price. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How do you got to see it? Faith, the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the let us, the let us, Bill, the let us, is God working in us. See, there's the body of Christ. That's a us. There's a head, which is the spirit, which leads the body, the spirit and the bride that says come. And so it's saying the us is all those who are living. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Let us create man in our image John 14 12 is a verse you can look at verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father the greater works are because the words being preached and it's being multiplied there's more and more people coming into the kingdom that's what the greater works mean preach the word in season out of season more and more harvest is coming. And since it's one body, that's only, quote, unquote, a holy temple unto the on this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what it is. Each person is a lively stone being built up a spiritual house in the household of God who has one father, one bride, and many children. Right? And so it's explained that it's a spiritual thing. It's by the word. It's the spirit of adoption. And so what it's saying here is it's saying, he, fairly, rarely I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, it's God that worketh in you to do his good will and pleasure. Let us, if any man be in Christ, therefore if any man be in Christ, let us, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let us make man in our image of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we, plural, should be a kind image, each produces after its kind, of first fruits. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Create man in his image, in his image of his creatures. God is one working through us to create new creatures in the body of Christ, many us, one planet, one waters, God giveth the increase. God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let us have let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. I'll make you fishers of men over the fowl of the earth, over the cattle, all men are his beasts, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing, those those who creep in widows' houses and devour widows' houses, and creepeth on the earth, right? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Image. Image. Likeness. Right? Likeness. Also we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the what? Heavenly. Our Father within, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, one name. James, of his own will, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Let us. See, it's God that worketh in us to create any man being Christ, he's a new creature, a new man in his what? Image. We born the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, our Father that are in heaven. Okay? And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we grown, ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to the wit, the redemption of our body. Those are those who are not baptized in the body as of yet. Right? But all these work of that one and self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. 
one and self same spirit. God's a spirit. God's a spirit that came in the likeness of sinful flesh. God's children are not dead. They're not children of the flesh. God has his father over the bride and children, which is the bride of Christ. The lamb is the father and husband over his spiritual children. Because if his bride has children, then he's got to be the father of his own children. You got to be born again and enter the kingdom of God. As Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. God doesn't have grandchildren. There's not like three different people with this one woman passing her around like some cheap whore trick. Uh, that's not the way the Bible explains it. Lamb is husband to New Jerusalem. Come hither, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Read all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, right? But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of all. He whom the Son set free is free indeed. That where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God is Spirit. Those who must worship Him must worship Him. Must worship Him in the Spirit and in truth. He has freed me from the law of sin and death. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. But he that was born after the bond one was born after the flesh. But he that was of the free one was born by the promise. After you heard and believed the gospel of your salvation, you received with the Holy Spirit of promise. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The father of spirits, the father of lies. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more be in subjection unto the father of spirits? It's not I that speak, but my Father that speaketh in me and live. God's a God of living and not the dead. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Above. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. And coming down from the Father of Christ in whom is no variableness. Right? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. Not the flesh. Neither shadow of turning. For ye were sometimes darkness. You got to be regenerated. You got to be born again. You got to be translated from this kingdom of darkness into this kingdom of the kingdom of light. We were of an evil and perverse generation, a wicked and crooked generation. Make the way, the way of the Lord straight. He is the straight gate. Enter ye at the straight gate. Broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. Many there be that go therein. Narrow, right? Is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Jesus says, I am the light. Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but should have the light of life. That's what the Bible says. I'm going to go ahead and end it there, man. I didn't want it to be this long. But here's the thing. I want you to please address the scriptures. You can go. You've got three-hour hangouts, four-hour hangouts, however long you have. If you can do that, you can go through this video and you can just dismantle it. Just dismantle it. You can troll thumbs it down. That doesn't address the scriptures. Dismantle it. You're supposed to be a Berean. Dismantle it. Or just receive it. Believe it. Or, or just go search the scriptures and be a Berean and receive it. If it be true, receive it. All right? All the sin that comes short of the glory of God when it's asked, what must I do to be saved? Is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel is Christ died for our sin. He was buried. He rose again the third day. According to the scriptures, it says his mortal body was quickened by the spirit. It says God raised him from the dead. So there's a man, Christ Jesus, the mediator between God and man. But there's what one God, the Father. And it says, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You were born of flesh and blood. That was a decision by your mom and your dad, and you couldn't choose who your mom and your dad were. But God is telling you to say, choose ye today. He says, the spirit and the bride say, come, let to whosoever will take and drink of the water of life freely. You can choose to be, be a son of a very, very wealthy, very rich, wise God, right? You can choose that. But all you got to do is believe the gospel, and you got to know that God is a spirit. And you have to believe the gospel. The gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. God raised him from the dead. And that was to put the devil to an open shame. But the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Children of the flesh are the children of God. Children of promise are counted for the seed. So you're going to be here now as a stranger after you believe the gospel. And you're here to tell other people about the kingdom. Because now you're a child of the kingdom of the commonwealth of Israel. And the common people heard him gladly. And what you do is you just, you can now that you have the word, you can preach the word. You can go out and give other people the gospel. Then also you'll go and you'll start reading the Bible and God will teach you. God is our teacher. You don't rely on, quote, me. You don't rely on any but all these other people. What you do is you, if you listen, you listen and then you search the scriptures out. And you see a contradiction, you say, no, nah, that doesn't seem to make sense. You can go out and you can ask the question and say, well, the Bible says this. Can you please answer this also? You don't have to be antagonistic. You don't have to be trollish. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. I'm not going to set up a troll account and just start trolling you to, to, um, 
to do thumbs down on all your videos because I don't agree. I'll ask you questions. And let us reason from, let says, let us come, let us reason from the scriptures. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, be persuaded men. Look, I'm saved, I can't be lost. I'm not worried about my salvation. And it says you can do nothing against the truth. So what's the what's the problem? The problem is, apparently the devil goes around as a roaring lion seeking who he, he may devour. He's disguising himself as an angel of light. He doesn't go in, neither does he suffer anyone else to go in. He wants to make other people twice fold, twice two folds the son of hell when he first found them. So he goes and preach a false gospel because he loves this world and he wants this world to go on. Because God says, look, I will have my people, whoever it is, I, I, come, come, come. He says, look, people don't believe. He says this wedding, it's this wedding will be full. And if people don't want to don't want to come to the wedding, fine. They're gonna they're gonna blaspheme the Holy Ghost and they they'll be preach the gospel and they'll say it's counted as foolish. Fine. You remain in your sin. You remain, you remain, your temple is left desolate as you, as he as he found it. But he said there's gonna be those who believe, those who aren't prideful, those who are gonna hear and just believe the gospel. And those who believe the gospel, they're saved. They can't be lost for any reason. Right? It's a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. So this guy, Bill, what he's doing is he's adding, you don't have to pray. There's people who can't even speak. There's people who can't even see, nor speak, nor even hear. But somehow that gospel, you communicate that gospel to them. And if they believe it, they're saved. They're saved. That's it. It's a wrap. So uh, again, I pray you believe it. Um, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look. He is my father, the lamb who's married to the bride, who's New Jerusalem, who's the mother of us all, and it's all spiritual blessings in Christ in heavenly places. Born not again. You got to be born again, not of this world, but of the of the, of the, of the heavenly, right? Because this world is perverse and dark and crooked and evil and wicked. And uh, God says, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The word that liveth and abideth forever. That's the gospel which I preached unto you today. So he that liveth and believe shall never die. Believe it thou this. That's what God is saying. God is a God of living and not the dead. So anyone who tells you anything otherwise, they're just lying. Simple as that. They're lying. And, um, you know, search the scriptures. All right. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, uh, God almighty. All right. Amen.